Welcome to the Creating Wealth Show with Jason Hartman. You're about to learn a new slant on investing, some exciting techniques, and fresh new approaches to the world's most historically proven asset class that will enable you to create more wealth and freedom than you ever thought possible. Jason is a genuine, self-made multimillionaire who's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, lender, developer, and entrepreneur who's owned properties in 11 states, had hundreds of tenants, and been involved in thousands of real estate transactions. This program will help you follow in Jason's footsteps on the road to your financial independence day. You really can do it. And now, here's your host, Jason Hartman, with the complete solution for real estate investors. Welcome and thank you so much for joining me today. This is your host, Jason Hartman, with episode 1064, 1064. And I am coming to you today from my new office. Yes, I have adopted a new temporary office for a few hours a day, every day this week. As you may know, I am in Aspen, Colorado, beautiful Aspen, Colorado. It's just absolutely gorgeous here. The weather is nice. And, you know, I discovered this little picnic table in the middle of a park. And I'm out here with my dog. And I'm out here with my friend Alicia's dog. So I've got two assistants with me in addition to technology. And I've recorded several podcasts out here this week. (laughs) Yes, it is an amazing time to be alive, the fact that you can do this. Much nicer than being indoors, I'll tell you that. So I'm under some nice, shady, beautiful trees. And uh, maybe you'll hear the leaves rustling when the wind picks up once in a while. Give you a little ambient background noise. Maybe it'll make you a little jealous. Hey, usually I'm the one jealous with everybody else being outdoors and I'm cooped up inside. So uh, (laughs) this has been kind of fun this week doing this. So today we are going to talk about how you can get good cash flow on properties with rising interest rates. As you probably know, amongst all the news, it has been a busy news week. Amongst all that news, uh, the Fed has hiked the interest rates again. Now, of course, mortgage rates did not go up. They did not respond to that Fed rate hike immediately. Remember, the Fed does not directly control mortgage rates. However, they certainly influence them. No question about that. We're going to talk about that today. And you know, several new things will come into the market. And since I have been in the business for, I don't know, I got to go look at that days between two dates website again. But I've been in the business a long time. You heard me talk about that before. I am claiming the the throne, the crown, the spot as the most experienced person in this particular little niche of my industry. I believe I am the most experienced person. If anybody listening is more experienced than yours truly, please come forward and tell me I am wrong. But yes, I have been doing this what? maybe 1,723 weeks now or something like that. A long time. So I've been through a few cycles. And, you know, it's interesting. One of my uh, friendly competitors was talking about uh, how, you know, you really shouldn't listen to or do business with people who haven't been through a cycle yet. So many people started in this business in 2009 or 2010 And my friendly competitor said uh, that they'd been in the business since 2004, 2005. And I'm thinking, you're a baby. That's like kindergarten (laughs) compared to me. Uh, So, uh, yeah. Anyway, just kind of funny there. Just kind of funny. But, But, yeah. So, here are a few new things based on my excessive amount of experience. Here are a few things that I believe will come back into the market. Number one is one that I coined the term for. Back in 2004, I was doing uh, my conferences and seminars, and I coined the phrase deferred down payment. Many of you haven't heard me talk about that in many, many years because there's been no reason to. However, I think we are going to be talking about the deferred down payment again. Yes, Jason Hartman's phrase, deferred down payment, I think that is coming back. So look for that on future episodes. We will also see, I believe, a little bit of a resurgence of adjustable rate mortgages. I think the adjustable rate market will come back a little bit. Not in a hugely significant way, but we are seeing rates inch up for sure. 
That will mean that the adjustable rate mortgage, the ARM, or the variable rate mortgage, whatever you want to call it, is going to make a, a reappearance. It really hasn't been very wanted or needed in the marketplace with these financial repression low interest rates that we've had for so many years. And they really are. You know, it's good and bad. I mean, of course, if you're getting a new loan, you want very low rates. But for lots of parts of the economy, low rates are a pretty bad thing. They are part of the financial repression scheme that many of us have talked about. So uh, look for those two things. And But wait, there's more. One more thing I want you to look for. The reemergence of the buy-down, the buy-down mortgage. Now, as you know, because you've been listening to my show and I've taught you so many things, <laughs> yes, pat myself on the back. Um, hey, I get to do this a little bit because I got a birthday coming up this week. And uh, with that in mind, I'll, I'll be a little bratty, okay? Don't you get to be a little bratty on your birthday? I, th- I think it's, it's earned, especially at my age, you know, hair's thinning out. Beard is turning gray. Hair's not turning gray. Uh, funny, though. Well, there's a little bit of gray in there, which I don't mind the gray. I think gray is kind of cool looking, actually. But, uh, yeah, the thinning, not so much. If anybody has a uh, suggestion for that or a cure or something you've done that's worked, because they've been promising a cure for hair loss forever, and I've been waiting. No, I'm not taking any pills, and no, I'm not getting any surgery. But isn't there supposed to be something that, like, it's an amazing time to be alive, right? It's supposed to turn your genes back on and make those follicles work better? Yeah, well, you know, they keep talking about it, but the FDA has held it up. They say they're on the verge, they're on the verge, but it's not here yet. So anyway, yes, we will see these three things, or these things come back, right? And the buy-down, that's what I was going to do, explain the buy-down to you. So when you get a mortgage, there are uh, these, you know, two major components to the cost of that mortgage. One is, of course, the interest rate. That's the one most people talk about and think about. But the other component of that is the prepaid interest, the prepaid interest. See, When you get a mortgage, sometimes you pay interest in advance. And the name for that is called points, points, loan points. A point is 1% of the loan amount. And what that really is, is nothing more than prepaid interest. And you can elect to have more or less prepaid interest. I've owned a few mortgage companies over the years and had a few different mortgage arrangements over the years. I'm not in love with that business, uh, so I'm not in it now. But if you are pricing a mortgage, you know, let's look at it from the side of the mortgage company. Okay, when they price a mortgage and they tell you, hey, you're going to pay five and a quarter percent and you got to pay me one point to get that loan. They could also price it at par, meaning they could price it with zero points and tell you you have to pay 5.75% interest. Or they could price it with two points and tell you that you could get a rate of 5%, or maybe 4.75 with two and a half points, or something like that. So you see, this pricing is nothing more than a scale. They can price it higher or lower on the interest rate if you're willing to pay more or less prepaid interest in the form of points. And when you buy a loan down, that simply means that you're paying more points up front to get a lower rate in the long term. And that can be a very wise deal. It can be a very good deal to buy down the rate. Because the idea, if you're a long-term investor, is that you'll hold that loan for many, many years and get the benefit of that lower rate, which the buy-down will pay for itself. So paying a little more up front can be well worth it. And what you need to do here is get a little spreadsheet out and calculate the time horizon, the time horizon for the break-even point. And usually you're going to find that time horizon is somewhere in the neighborhood of three years, give or take. So if you're going to own the property longer than three years, it's usually worth buying the rate down. Now, 
the buy down isn't a question of yes, you're going to buy it down or no, you're not going to buy it down. It's a question of how much you're going to buy it down or how much you're not going to buy it down. These are all things that you can talk to our lender network and our investment counselors about. We'll be happy to help you with this in more detail, of course. That's what we're here for. Now, a couple other things. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what went on last week. So new home sales were up last month. We talked about that before. Two months of declines. However, increasing costs of borrowing, we've just been talking about that, could uh, temper that a little bit. But remember, the way it works first is there's an increase in buying and then ultimately, you know, higher rates will temper the home sales rate. Pending home sales uh, were down slightly in August for the fourth month in a row. Tight inventory, that's definitely the biggest issue, rising rates, the secondary issue to that, and increased prices, uh, of course, making affordability very, very difficult for people, especially in the high-end markets the cyclical markets, the markets we don't really like, okay? But home prices are still rising. They're going up, even though the pace is a little uh, slower. Of course, the Case-Shiller Index, told you about the flaws with the Case-Shiller Index many times over the years, rose 6% for the annual number uh, in July, down from 6.2% in June, okay? Or that's the other way around. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay, Fed is expected to hike policy rates again in December and three more times in 2019. Wow. (laughs) And as I've said before, can you hear that wind? It is windy here. Wow. This is the most transparent Federal Reserve in my lifetime, for sure. They say that increasing inflation and very strong employment rates uh, support rate hikes, okay? So uh, that's kind of the update on a few things there. I also want to give you a little self-management update from our client and um, somewhat becoming frequent guest on the show, uh, and that is Drew Baker. And uh, he left me a message that I thought I should share with you about uh, self-management. So here that is, and then we will get to our mortgage guest today and talk about uh, mortgage rates and how you can keep your cash flow good even in a rising rate environment. Hey, Jason, I have a little self-management update for you that I think is kind of fun that you might appreciate. So I had a property that I haven't had a chance to get into for years, and I lost the rent-ready photos because it's been probably five years or more. The tenants have been in there, and it's been like crickets for a while. So I wanted to get in there, see what was going on. And so I had my tenant handyman go over there, and the biggest problem lately is... Now, keep in mind, he's talking about a property in Indianapolis or Memphis. I know he owns in two markets, and he lives in Southern California. So just understand that when he's in the context of what he's saying here. I've had to use the 13-year-old son of these tenants to translate back and forth because they don't speak English. So what's nice is my tenant, the other tenant that's doing the maintenance on, on these properties that's helping me out, he speaks Spanish, and he went over there and said, hey, Andrew, I'm here, just want to touch base with you. And I said, hey, call me on FaceTime. So he called me on FaceTime, turned the camera around, and showed me everything in the house. And I said, hey, I think if, uh, you know, a ceiling fan with the remote would look nice there. And, well, maybe the chandelier is a little bit off from the table, so maybe we get a, a chandelier that's a little higher up. And let's go around the house and count all the dome lights that might need to be replaced. It was really nice because I got a chance to kind of see the floor plan. Now, if you've listened to the other episodes, you know that Drew's philosophy is he's trying to really improve his properties, and he's doing it so inexpensively, buying incredibly inexpensive stuff at Costco, okay, or online, and just having it sent to the property. He's got one of his tenants basically acting as a handyman for the rest of his properties. (laughs) He's, He's... Still ahead, with all the money he saved on property management fees, he's got much happier tenants, he's got higher rent, he's improving cash flow, and he's improving his properties all at the same time. He's doing all these things concurrently and coming out ahead financially by self-managing. Really just an, an awesome deal. In 3D and make some design decisions there. What was interesting was, you know, I asked him about the appliances, and he's my maintenance guy's translating to the woman 
who's living there. And she said, oh, yeah, the property management company, we told them that the stove went out, but they never came to fix it and ignored our service requests. So we got this cheap free stove that we put in place, but then the burners stopped working. So they've been renting a house without like a, a, a properly working stove. I guess it doesn't regulate the temperature well enough. Another crappy property manager, right? Imagine that. <laughs> a property manager that doesn't do their job yet keeps taking your money. Imagine that. <laughs> you can tell, like I say, a booming economy does not make for good morality and good business ethics. In fact, it does the exact opposite because people become very overconfident. They all think they're doing great work when they're not because they can get away with it because the rising tide floats all the ships. You know, it's like Napoleon's uh, famous quote that I always try to remember. The most dangerous moment comes with victory. That's when we become complacent and cocky and <laughs> the downfall is right around the corner. So, uh, yeah. This is just great what he's doing. I mean, he's really doing a good job here. And uh, we've recommended it, talked about it a lot on the show. So let's listen to the rest of his message. Well, that's ridiculous. You know, you can't live in a house without, you know, appliances. So I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go and find something as a placeholder to put in there temporarily. So I went on Craigslist in Indianapolis. I found a nice electric stove that someone is moving, so they needed to sell it. It was $150. And the funny thing is, is my maintenance handyman is a truck driver. So I said, hey, go over there and pick up the stove and put it in the house. He said, well, I can't do it till Monday. So I called the people on Craigslist and said, hey, can you go deliver the stove? I'll pay you an extra $25. They said, sure. So I told the tenant. These people are going to come drop off a stove. Please pay them the $150, and I'll take it off your rent. And you have a nice stove that matches the appliance suite that's already there, same brand, you know, and fits in nicely. So it was kind of, uh, it was a little bit of legwork, but it was nice to have these people get a stove the next day that matches what they already have, have a translator, and then the funny little tip of the hat at the end was... The son texted me, who's, you know, the one that speaks English, and said, oh, my parents are so happy. Thank you so much. We really like the fan, the new fan that you put in with the remote and the stove and all that stuff. And they said, hey, if you ever need a painter, my dad is a professional painter. And, you know, it's funny because when I looked around FaceTime, my tenant said, the maintenance tenant guy said, hey, the place looks like they've really... So, you know, if you didn't catch what he's doing here, right, he got a walkthrough of his house from, what, 2,000 miles away on FaceTime video. It's great condition with it, and the walls are all painted nicely and everything. So the wife told me that they've really kept the place up while they've been living here. And so I thought it was funny that, you know, maybe one of my tenants might be my painters, uh, my, my painter in the future. So, you know, it kind of made me realize that the people that we're renting to in these neighborhoods have service-related jobs and, you know, Maybe it's a little bit, <laughs> you don't want to totally, you know, eat from the same place you are renting from necessarily. But in terms of, you know, you want to be careful not to cross a line and alienate people if they don't do good work. But it seems like the proof is in the pudding. You can see the paint job in the house. <laughs> and so start off small and, and work your way up. But um, I thought that was kind of a fun little social experiment that ended up working out well. And I could do it remotely and everyone's happy you know, it'll be a place that they'll want to stay. I love that story. I love it. I love his whole story, his whole diary on self-management that he has been sharing with us. So, Drew, thank you for that. All of our listeners really appreciate it. Look, folks, we offer property managers and property management referrals, of course, and some of them are great and others start out great and become less than great, <laughs> I'll say, uh, later and we end up firing them. And we, you know, we help our clients get new managers when needed and things like that. But the best thing, my best hope for all of you listening, whether or not you actually self-manage your properties, is that you are able to do it that you are empowered investors. Remember, that's a core idea. It's a core philosophy of mine and my companies is to create an army of empowered investors. 
That's our slogan, right? We provide the complete solution for real estate investors. And one of the best things to do is to make you empowered so you don't have to rely on anybody else. And when you do rely on someone else, you can choose to rely on them. And you can also call them out when you know you're getting a story and you're not getting a fair shake. So that's the best thing we can offer you. Hey, learn more about this in Hawaii at our Profits in Paradise event. We've got a fantastic event coming up. It's going to be really fun, educational, just some great people coming. So uh, we've still got tickets for that. Still got early bird pricing. What are we, about six weeks out, maybe five weeks out? Go to jasonhartman.com, get your tickets for Profits in Paradise. And we've got a few new guests joining us for the Venture Alliance component following that event in Kauai. Uh, So we've got uh, Waikiki Beach and then Kauai for Venture Alliance Retreat. And you can join us for both of those things. jasonhartman.com for more info. And here is Adam with your mortgage update. Welcome to the Mortgage Minutes for October 2018. We just had the FOMC meeting end, and they raised rates from 2% to two and a quarter. And we're here talking with the lender from Jason Hartman's network. How are you today? Good, sir. How are you? Thank you, Adam, for inviting me to the call. Absolutely. Now, the Fed raised rates from two to two and a quarter percent. Many people expected them to raise rates because, well, they said they were going to. And so right. was this the rate hike everybody was expecting or was it a little bit bigger than expected? No, this is what was expected and to be quite honest was most likely priced into the market. So as we were uh, looking at, at rates for the past uh, number of weeks and months, the anticipation of this Fed rate hike coming through had already been kind of absorbed by the market and it was totally expected. Sometimes when the Fed acts outside of what's expected or the norm, so for example, if they had raised a half a point instead of a quarter, then that would have created a ripple in the marketplace and would have had a reaction where rates would have moved one way or the other. Okay. Now, as the Fed has stated, they're going to keep raising rates. And I think last I read, they're looking to get up into three, three and a half percent for the Fed rate, which is still a huge jump from where it is now. Now, is the market, the mortgage market already pricing that in completely, or do they do it kind of meeting by meeting? No, I think they're probably not pricing the full extent of that into the market right now, but certainly would have anticipation for another quarter point hike, maybe by the end of the year, as at least indicated by the Fed. So I think then once we see if inflation is a concern in the market, then our mortgage rates might continue to move higher with the Fed. Although the next hike might be anticipated at a quarter point, beyond that, it's hard to say if they will continue in that trend. Now, what kind of impact does, as December approaches and they look at their next meeting, what kind of impact will the quarter point create to investors? Should we look for our rates to increase a quarter as well, or kind of what are we looking at? Well, I think you've got to look at a couple of things in tandem. You know, if the stock market continues to rise, you know, then then money flows out of the bond market into the stock market in a very general sense. So that will have an impact on mortgage rates. Considering that mortgage rates are tied to the bond market, if the stock market continues to strengthen and the bond market continues to weaken, then mortgage rates will continue to weaken and rise in in return. So, you know, there are a lot of other factors that go into, you know, how lenders price uh, mortgage rates, but a good indicator of that is where the 10-year treasury yield is at today. So as that continues to rise, mortgage rates will continue to rise, regardless of what the Fed does. Okay. Now let's talk about rates. What rates are you seeing right now? We're going to assume somebody has a pretty decent credit score. What rates are you seeing for people who put down 25% and 20%? What's kind of the range that we're looking at this month? So from an investment property standpoint, if you take an average purchase price, let's say of 125000 and you put 20% down... With a good credit score, and a good credit score would be anything over 740. Today, I'm seeing 5.75% for a 30-year fixed with no points. And then if you were to put 25% down, we're likely going to get that rate down to about 5.25% with no points. All right. Now, are you finding at this time that many investors, that points are making sense or are points not really making sense right now? You know, for investors who are in the market to put 20% down and, you know, are looking to grow their portfolio, 
I would say, you know, they're retaining that other 5% to apply towards a future acquisition, you know, or for another property. But having said that, some investors will look at the 20% down interest rate at 5.75 and say, okay, if I can pay a half a point or if I can pay another point, and and a point is 1% of your loan amount. So if you put another 1% in one point into buying down the rate, you can likely get the rate down to the 25% level. Like you can get it down to like 5.25 or maybe even 5.375. So some investors like that because ultimately they're really putting 21% into the deal rather and then getting the benefit of the 25% down rate. So some investors are looking at paying that one point when they're in the market, let's say, just to put the 20% minimum down. Those investors that we work with that are coming to the table with the 25% down generally are, are, are happy with that rate without points. So we are seeing both sides of it, though. But like I said, those folks that want to put 20% down and maybe pay a point are getting the benefit of the lower 25% down similar interest rate. So that's attractive for them. Okay, now there's a lot of political stuff going on that's impacting our economy in general. What things do you see coming in to the economy that might impact the mortgage rates in the next month or two? Is there anything going on that you think might have a significant impact one way or another? Oh, sure. I mean, any any geopolitical event that occurs can have a big impact on mortgage rates. You know, let's say there is some global trouble, for example, with Iran, okay, or continued sanctions on China and other countries. Those could have a big impact on how the stock market reacts. Um, And if the stock market does take a turn from recent highs, then obviously money would flow back into bonds and our rates could improve. But anytime you see some geopolitical activity, such as any kind of strife or war, threat of danger to the U.S. economy, then generally speaking, that's money flowing out of the stock market back into bonds, the safe haven. But you haven't seen anything in particular that you are worried about happening over the next month or two? Not necessarily, no. Not, not seeing anything other than, you know, the continued improvement in the market, in the stock market, which is weakening our rates, you know, and weakening the bond market. So Now, where do you expect, if the Fed gets all the way up to their stated goal of, you know, in the threes, yeah. where would you expect interest rates to be around that time? Well, as it relates specifically to an investor, you know, I think your 20% down interest rate today at 5.75 could end up around six and a quarter, maybe six and a half, which would correlate to a primary home interest rate, you know, the equivalent being around 5%. You know, your primary home interest rate today is in is still very good in the mid fours. You know, it's about 4.5, 4.375 with excellent credit scores and a similar down payment. So as it relates to our investor community, at a worst case scenario, I'm probably seeing it plateau in the low to mid sixes. So whenever the December meeting comes along and they raise it a quarter percent, should we just expect there's going to be a quarter percent bump in our rate as well? No, not necessarily. You know, again, that could already be priced in or it could be priced in over the course of the next couple of months. So if they do move it again in December and we have similar rates today, then I, I really don't see that being the indicator of why rates would go higher. I think the stronger the economy and stronger the stock market reacts to that, the weaker our rates will be or the higher our rates will go. Okay. Now, is there anything I haven't asked you think is important for the investor to know? You know, I think what's really important outside of rates uh, for investors is what we're seeing across the, the nation as a national lender and an expert in the investment property kind of niche financing world is inventory. You know, I think most uh, turnkey partners that we work with are struggling with inventory or the inventory that they do have is flying off the shelf pretty quickly. So I think from a financing perspective to some of our clients who are in the market looking to grow their portfolio, you know, try and find those properties through the investment property counselors and jump on them as quickly as you can. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it and uh, hope you have a good one. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'm Jason Hartman, and I'd like to invite you to our very first two-day conference in beautiful Hawaii. Many of our attendees are making a vacation out of this event. You will learn the most innovative strategies for real estate investing available today. We have helped thousands of people invest in properties around the U.S. 
and we can help you do it too. So I hope you'll join us and happy investing. Thank you so much for listening. Please be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. Be sure to check out the show's specific website and our general website, HartmanMedia.com, for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Remember that guest opinions are their own. And if you require specific legal or tax advice or advice in any other specialized area, please consult an appropriate professional. And we also very much appreciate you reviewing the show. Please go to iTunes or Stitcher Radio or whatever platform you're using and write a review for the show. We would very much appreciate that. And be sure to make it official and subscribe so you do not miss any episodes. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode.